Hello everyone. Welcome to Groundwater Hydrology and Management NPTEL course. This is week five, lecture one. In the past week, we looked at the important components of groundwater hydrology. Specifically, we looked at hydraulic conductivity, specific yield, porosity, etc. And then we looked at how to estimate the water level from the top of the well to the bottom of the well. Then we looked at the elevation of the well and how to estimate pressure head and hydraulic head. So now we have the elevation of the water level from the mean sea level. So that is the net we want because from there we can establish the gradients. In today's lecture, we'll be further looking at how to use those data and also how to understand the movement of water. In the week five, we will also look at the governing equations of groundwater flow specific to the aquifer type and specific to the amount of soil moisture present in the medium. It could be a saturated system or an unsaturated system. So let's move on. We did look at this uh, estimate of the hydraulic head, which is total H, summation of Z plus Psi, and Z was your elevation head, <coughs> and your Psi was your pressure head. We added both to get the hydraulic head. So now you have the elevation of water from the mean sea level, which is zero. We saw different exercises on how to calculate it. I hope you understood how to do the calculations and subtract. Now let's use this. For example, the most important groundwater monitoring body in India is the Central Groundwater Board, which monitors around 50,000 wells across India. You could see the distribution of the wells across India and most of it is present in high groundwater extraction regions so that we could quantify the groundwater use and also management practices can be made. So you don't see much in the northern <coughs> parts of Kashmir, um, Sam, those regions because also it is hard to get the monitoring data the monitoring well into the ground. So now we have this data. Okay, so uh, what do you do with it? So now you have a groundwater level data, um, and we know that at least from the government record, we have around 15,000 wells. We can convert them into contours. So I would define what a contour is in the next slide. So contours are the elevation of the hydraulic head connected along a line so that it represents a unique and uniform groundwater elevation or groundwater level across the study area. So in the previous slide, I showed you uh, the map of India and where the wells are, but let's look at a closer look of one particular study by Suman et al. Um, where they show the uh, location of groundwater monitoring wells and the data is taken. So once you take the data, you have estimated the hydraulic head, which is the elevation of the water level from the zero level. And from there, we're trying to get more information, how water flows between the wells. We take only two wells, we definitely know water uh, uh, flows from the water flows from the higher potential to lower potential, which means higher hydraulic head to lower hydraulic head. That is a straightforward question. But in terms of a larger area, for example, this study area, you could see that uh, there are multiple wells and the water level in the well would determine which side the groundwater will flow. And so for that, we make a map of all the locations of the groundwater level, and then we add the data for the same time. Please note, you need to have the same time recording of all the wells. 
and that is why I am asking you to use central groundwater board data because it is either peak monsoon, <coughs> post monsoon or uh, summer or winter. So you have four times they would monitor the water levels and it is at a particular season. So at least more or less the uh, level of water is captured uniformly across the study area. So we have, for example, you take the peak monsoon, which is the water has gone into the wells and then the water has recharged the well, the water level has gone up. So let's assume that you take the groundwater level in these wells during the peak monsoon. What happens? You first make a grid of where the wells are and you have the locations. For example, <coughs> in this uh, location, in this study area, I'm just using a kind of a graph of uh, rows and columns. Uh, you could see that uh, only those areas where you have the uh, water level recorded, you can have the elevation connected. So here in this um, uh, figure, you could see that the water levels at these points are all at 1,100 meters above sea level. So you first populate the wells and then populate the data of the groundwater level at each well. Then what you have to do is connect the wells which have equal groundwater level. So this line is called an equipotential line and a map with all the equipotential lines is called a contour. This can be used for contours for elevation, contours for other aspects also, but since this is a groundwater, we call it groundwater contour and the water levels are groundwater levels and the groundwater hydraulic head. So the hydraulic head along these points is the same, which is 1,100 meters above sea level. The next uh, values I have, let's say I have 1,080. So 1,080 more or less, I have 1,079 or 1,081 or something. But you have to find the wells with similar groundwater levels and then connect them. So this line you see here is made of connecting all the wells of the same groundwater level, which is 1080. Then moving on, there are some wells. So here we don't have any well data because look at here, not all the area is full of groundwater level. You only pick the points where you can connect. So not all points would be connected. For example, I would have a water uh, level uh, reading there, um, or I would have a water level reading here, a water level reading here, etc. So all these wells were around 1100. So I mark 1100 as a line and draw it across connecting these dots. Okay. So that is one contour line at an elevation of 1100. Then what do I do is I go to the next wells to see what is the water level. For example, if there's a 1100 here, then I'll have to connect it to this one also, for example, here. But since that is not the case, we are not connecting it. And that won't be uh, readily connecting also. Maybe you'll have one point standing out, but don't connect it. It is mostly across the area where you have to connect, okay? So then we have this <coughs> water levels, um, which are at 1080. So 1080 along this line and it has been connected through this line. So you have all the line, all the wells along this line having 1080 meters as water level. Okay. So the first exercise is to map the wells, which we have done in the, in the previous slide. Uh, and then we uh, map all the data that is uh, having the same uh, uh, record of the water level. Then we have, so this is the first exercise, as I said, you map the water levels, then you map or draw the line, connecting the line of all the wells with the same water level. Okay. Let me 
me clear this uh, diagram. And then you have all different lines coming up. So here in this example, you have 1,100, 1,080, 1,060, and around 1,040, 1,020. So what is the minimum uh, interval between these lines? It is 20 meters, right? Because 1,060 and 1,080, if you subtract it, it's 20 meters. 1060 and 1040 is 20 meters. So this is called the interval of the contours. Okay. So the contour line could be thousands or hundreds or fifties, etc. But how close are they depends on the interval. So if you say uh, one meter interval contour level, then you will have multiple lines running through. Like for example, one line here, one line here, etc. But it really doesn't make sense because it makes the uh, map very congested. So you don't do that. Okay. So what you have is you can keep a good interval depending on the water level. So in this water level, 1080 and 1060, there could be some wells which are 1070. Okay. But we don't add it because the interval, the minimum interval is 20. So you group all the wells 2080 or you group all the wells 2060. So you can make and choose uh, between that because it doesn't change the hydrology. It doesn't change how the groundwater flows. It just makes your map look better so that we can understand the groundwater flow. So the first exercise, get the wells, get the water levels, and then connect all the lines, understand what is the what could be a good water level contour interval. Um, and here in this case, it is 20 meters. Otherwise, it will be, for example, if I had five, then there will be another line here, which is 1,075, uh, and then here another line which says 1,070, and then here 1,065, and then 1,060. So it always goes down, okay? It doesn't jump 1,080, 1,095, 1,075, no. Uh, it will fall through a gradual pattern. Uh, that's how groundwater flows. <coughs> so then we move on to what next after we have mapped these things the next uh, would be to clean the other wells which do not have the data and you come up with a depth to water level uh, map along with the contour uh, in the same image so if you look at the study what they have done is they have taken the wells only the wells that they want to be portrayed in the contour they connect it with lines so now in this in this image you don't see the wells because all these lines represent 216 meters uh, above sea level. And these are 28 meters, 208 meters, et cetera. So you have 192, 220, 208. Um, so how does water flow? As I said, water flows from higher potential to lower potential. In the previous exercise, this is not the same uh, area. It is just a blow up of a very different um, exercise is to show how the map is made. So here you could see that the water would flow from 1100 to 1060 because it flows from high potential to low potential. Moving on, in this image, you can uh, draw the similar uh, diagram to show how the water flows. So you know 216 and here it's 208 and there is a 208 uh, and then there is a 200. So groundwater will flow this direction. Right from high potential to low potential. So it flows from 216 to 208 and from 208 to 200. And always it flows perpendicular to the line. Okay. Let me draw this again. It flows from here, it goes like this perpendicular and then perpendicular, cutting through the lines, it goes to 192. So this is how groundwater flows, not along the line, because along the line, the potential is same. For example, in this line, it is all 208. So there's a well for 208 and another well at 208. Water won't flow, it'll just stop because there is no need to flow. It is a, both same potential. It will only flow when one well is above and one is lower in higher potential and water would flow from high potential to low potential. Okay, so in this diagram, as you see, uh, water will flow from high 216 to 208 and then 192 etc and from here also and then from here also you have this arrow i'll just stop it here and from here also 208 to 200 to 192 so there in this lake it looks like a lake or a depression 
groundwater flows from all directions towards the uh, lake. This similar thing can be observed along the river networks. So if you see here, this is a river network and along the river, the elevation is low because that is a, a deeper elevation and that is where water is. So water would flow from high elevation to low elevation and the river is gaining water because of groundwater. What did we call this system as a gaining stream? Okay, so these two images uh, are showing how you get the water levels from a map and then convert it into contours and then understand the groundwater flow direction. Magnitude is different, which is the volume, the rate, the, the flow, which we will be estimating through the uh, governing equations. But it is also important to understand the direction of groundwater flow. Moving on, once you have it and clean all the other uh, data from your map, it is a very, very important informative map that can tell a lot of things. Let's take, for example, in this study, we have uh, saline flows and valleys, which is a different uh, geology, and then an alkali soils, which is the daughter. There is a cross section, let's not uh, worry about it. And then there is a grease wood uh, type of material present here. There is a flowing well and a short, short hot springs. And then discharge area or transition zones are here. Um, and then you have a topographic contour, which is at a 2,500 feet above sea level. Okay, so you have two types of contours, as I said. One contour could be just the elevation of the land. So you connect all the points with the elevation of the land, or you can take the piezometric contours, which is the groundwater elevation. So let's not worry about the elevation of the land. We are looking at more the groundwater. So if you look at the dashed lines here, which you can see along here, okay? So you can find that the groundwater would flow from high potential to low potential, which is 2,500 to 2,450, and then to 2,410. Similarly, draw it also. Similarly, water would flow to this area, okay? And then, um, Water would flow to this area, and then water would flow from 2,350-400. So here also you can have uh, water flowing from this area, okay? Because it's continuously decreasing. From 2,600 goes to 2,500, 450, 2,410, and then goes down to 2,300. The groundwater level. So you have a continually falling groundwater level, uh, which means the direction is from bottom to uh, up, or here we'll call it as south to north. Okay. The other reason um, is very important to understand the geology types and how these also influence the groundwater direction. Uh, but we will only worry about what is the, the contour, what is the contour interval. So here, if you see the groundwater contour interval is how much? the least between the uh, two contours. And that would be around 10, because here we have dashed line at 2,410, another dashed line at 2,400. So that will be around 10 me uh, feet above sea level. Okay. And just so that you can see, so 2000, uh, this is not a uh, groundwater level, it is a elevation level. Sometimes your elevation is at the same level of the groundwater. It can happen. We saw uh, artesian wells, flowing wells, etc. So this is how more and more information can be brought. We can also look at if the contour is following the topography. So the topography tells me that here it is 2,500 and the groundwater is almost 2,500 here. The difference between the elevation and the groundwater. Okay, and here the groundwater is at 2300, whereas here the elevation of the land is 2400, which means the land is here and below the land, 100 uh, feet below the land is the groundwater aquifer. So these information can be overlaid on, on top of each other for more um, uh, decision making and to understand which side the groundwater flows. Please understand that. Uh, these all these data can nowadays be available for free and open source, and you can put it in a GIS environment to quickly analyze it. Even the GIS 
environment is free of cost. It is open source. Then as I did by my pen, drawing pen on the slide, you can also see that groundwater um, models are there where you they could also put in these kind of arrow marks or gradients, how the groundwater flows. And in this particular uh, study, you could see how um, you could see how the uh, flow directions have been made. So first they took the points of the groundwater, okay? And they made the, they made the groundwater well uh, map uh, on the surface. And then they took the water levels uh, from uh, the groundwater. It is uh, meters, okay? We have 104 meters, 116 meters, et cetera, et cetera. And then they made the contour uh, map. Uh, of the wells, okay? So what did they find? Uh, they find, um, uh, you can see here how they have labeled it, water table elevation meters above sea level. And the number is 110 is just a uh, example of the contour number. And here it is 110 meters above sea level. So you can just put so. So here it is 110. 108, 106, they could have used a different color, but it's okay, we could still see the difference because this is a, a smaller number and this is at a bold number. So the first things, as I said, put down the wells, put down the hydraulic head and then connect line through the common water level. So let's take this 110. So they put 110 right near 118 and 116, but some of these wells may be on the line of 110. So it is okay. And then what we also found out that is the groundwater flows from high potential to low potential. So from 112 to 110, 108, 106. So it flows through this direction as their arrow marks also say. The second thing is what is the interval, contour interval? And the contour interval is, um, um, the, that is the well. So the contour interval is 112 minus 110, which is two meters, and all the others are also two meters. It goes by two. So the contour interval in this particular uh, figure is meters of sea level. Okay. So all this is done. Now let's see what understandings we can get. Uh, we can get is that the water flows to the river, the Gomati River, uh, as per the study of Kumar et al. So the water is flowing from a higher elevation to the Gomati River. The Gomati River is getting water through base flow and groundwater flow. And so it is a gaining stream. In some regions, the water might be going through. Okay, so like this, it will go through to the other side of the bank, which means in one side of the river, the river is getting water from the groundwater. On the other side, uh, so this is the gaining part. Uh, and then on the other side, it is losing the water to this side. But in this case, you could see that both the water is coming towards from both the sides towards the river. So groundwater is losing and giving water to the stream to recharge and flow. So it becomes a gaining stream. So from this, uh, we can have more uh, structures in the map like Himalayas. So this is the Gomadhi River, so it is in the Ganges Plain. <coughs> so you can have other features in your map and get more understanding why this groundwater is flowing towards this direction. You have an elevation gradient, you can have a pumping station, you can have an urban city which is pumping the water. So all these things can aid in changing the groundwater direction towards one particular point. So here it is a river, we are understanding that it is because of higher elevation from the Himalayas. You don't have to stop uh, there, you can also make a surface. In the previous um, uh, examples, we saw that we can make a groundwater contour and if you can interpolate the wells, okay? So if you have well data, you can convert it into a line, but if you have the well data and between two points and then multiple points, you can interpolate between, between them to make a contour surface. So here, what you see is the hydraulic head 
which is above the uh, mean sea level in meters. And also you see the interval is around 0 0.3 to 0 0.1. Um, and here we don't um, look at lines, but it is a coloring scheme that has been used. So this study site also has piezometers, which is groundwater wells coming in. So it is a modeled uh, groundwater surface. Um, and it also helps you to understand the gradient. So let's quickly look at how the groundwater flows. It flows from high head to low head. So in the coloring scheme, it should flow from blue color to red color. We don't have red color here, but we do have the green color. So groundwater flows from north to south. But something else is happening. So it is actually gaining some water here. So maybe there is a stream which is giving water to the groundwater and also then it loses more in the bottom part, which is the uh, southernmost part of your uh, study area. Also, we, we could see that it is seasonally variant, the amount of water that comes in. Uh, so there is a fall season, winter season and spring season. And this study was done by uh, Chinasami in um, Missouri. So you could see that uh, how the groundwater changes um, between seasons can also be mapped and understood well using these contour lines or contour surface, uh, mostly interpolated between the points. There are multiple interpolation techniques to get groundwater into a surface. We will not discuss that fully because that is beyond the scope, uh, but I would recommend you could use IDW method, okay, inverse distance weighted method, um, so that it can capture the groundwater uh, within a radius. Okay, So for example, if you have uh, two uh, wells, one well here, one well here, uh, let's add more, four wells, uh, and you do IDW, then it will take only the nearby wells and then interpolate. Okay, it will not take these wells and interpolate because it's far away. So the distance increases, so the weightage of these wells decrease. So this interpolation is very important because nearby wells talk to each other rather than different wells, and then the groundwater gradient is made. So all this could be done uh, with models quickly and more uh, easily, more effectively, with, because there could be a lot of errors. So when you do it by hand, uh, contours are easy, but when you do it by hand to connect, uh, interpolate these wells, then you have to physically measure the distance between the wells and then uh, run uh, interpolation codes and then interpolate. It's going to be hard. So we always use GIS software or ModFlow and other types of groundwater models. We will look into some models in detail in the coming lecture, but with this, we would um, end uh, today's lecture on how to understand a particular hydraulic head in isolation we saw last week, but in today's lecture, we saw how to look at it in combination. How can that information can be converted into a contour map and from the map, how the movement of water, the direction of water can be understood. I'll conclude today's session. I will see you in the next class.